Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, today I I changed a little bit the title of this uh, presentation because uh, uh, on the agenda it was only about Marconi, but I want to give you a general overview about what's happening uh, in the HPC world. I also took a, a title from a, a movie. So I hope to be funny, just like the movie, but I I don't think I will. So uh, in the summary, so what's around now in the HPC world, also outside Italy, can be interesting to see what are the opportunities uh, uh, for Quantum Espresso. Then uh, uh, a little introduction to Marconi, that is the Italian HPC infrastructure uh, since uh, some month. Uh, and also some, uh, some words about the night's landing, uh, that is actually the uh, most recent advance in the HPC world. And then uh, finally, some suggestions about how to survive to this new kind of architecture. Happily, hopefully. So um, I'm sorry this is not very clear, but just to give a look to what's uh, around us. Uh, so this is the first positions uh, of the top 500, so the most uh, efficient and uh, most powerful supercomputers in the world. Uh, the first uh, two uh, places uh, are for China uh, supercomputers. Then uh, we have the uh, United States. And the first uh, position occupied by uh, European uh, uh, supercomputer is the uh, position eight, uh, this is occupied by the Swiss uh, National Supercomputing Center with the Pizdaint supercomputer. Then uh, we are here. It, Italy is at uh, the position 12, not so bad. And, uh, but what I want to um, stress about uh, this chart is that, uh, um, in general, apart the first uh, uh, position that is a very, very a particular architecture. Uh, we have uh, the, the, the uh, dominant uh, technologies are uh, Intel Xeon Phi. They appear at position two, five, and six, so the most important places. There are uh, NVIDIA GPUs equipped systems uh, that appear at position three and eight, so at the Oak Ridge and uh, uh, in the Japan Supercomputing, uh, sorry, at the Swiss National Supercomputing Center, yes, yes. And uh, there is some uh, position that is still occupied by the IBM BGQ uh, architecture, but uh, we should co consider the fact that uh, this is uh, um, a kind of a supercomputer <laughs> architecture that uh, is not going to continue. So it was dropped down by IBM. So in general, for the future, it seems that the next supercomputer families will be based either on Intel Xeon Phi uh, families of uh, uh, many core architectures or on uh, NVIDIA GPUs <laughs> equipped uh, accelerated systems. So we have those two kind of uh, uh, directions. Uh, this is also true for the European uh, infrastructure. In Europe, uh, we have uh, several systems uh, for the tier zero uh, layer. And this is the, the uh, table from the last uh, place uh, tier zero call. And uh, we have uh, some systems that are now quite old. For example, there is a, a Curie uh, or the old Mare Nostrum that are based on the Intel Sandy Bridge uh, uh, Xeon uh, cores. Then we have uh, Pitts Dynt that is the most powerful in this moment uh, in uh, Europe that is based on GPUs. On the other on the other uh, direction, we have the Marconi system. In this table, we have uh, the partition of Marconi that is based on the Intel Broadwell uh, uh, processors. But the next uh, partition that was uh, uh, released to the public uh, just uh, the, the, the first uh, last week, so it will be based on the Intel Xeon 5 uh, Night's Landing uh, processors. So let's look at the uh, Italian infrastructure. 
Uh, Marconi uh, is uh, the name chosen for this uh, new supercomputer. And uh, Marconi will be composed by three different stages uh, or three different partitions. The first partition called A1 was uh, uh, open to the uh, production in July, August of the, uh, 2016. And it was a partition quite, uh, uh, let's say, classical because it was based on Intel uh, Broadwell processor. Uh, Intel Broadwell processor are quite familiar because uh, are on the line of the, the standard Xeon uh, uh, processor. So they are the, the next generation after the actual processor. Uh, those uh, nodes in the partition A1 are made by two, uh, two uh, sockets with uh, 18 cores each. Uh, but the, the very new uh, kind of architecture is based uh, on the night's landing in the partition A2. Partition A2 was open to the production just a few days ago. And uh, this is uh, some kind of consequences on the, uh, on the functionalities of this partition. But uh, I will talk about the stability of the system uh, later. Now we are passing uh, from something that is um, something which we were used to. So the, 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 there was no, nothing new about the Broadwell processors. Uh, instead, for the Intel Xeon Phi, uh, in, and in particular for the Knight's Landing, we have some characteristic features that are um, more challenging. Uh, the most important, uh, for example, or the most evident is that uh, each node as a single uh, Intel Xeon Phi with uh, 68 cores. So this is something that uh, is very, very uh, um, strong on the line of the many core approach. Uh, and then in the next year, or in this current year now, uh, we will have also a third partition of Marconi <laughs> that will be based on the Intel uh, Skylake processor. And uh, well, we don't have uh, a lot of information about the, 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 this kind of uh, architecture. Is uh, the, 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 uh, the architecture that will follow on the Xeon line. So it's the, the, the son of the Broadwell, in some sense. But OK, this is something that we will uh, see later. <clears throat> okay, uh, so don't, I don't want to focus only on the generation of uh, processors that uh, we are going to adopt, but also to everything is around the processors. So uh, I, don't, I won't talk about the file system, but let me tell you something uh, that is quite uh, interesting and problematic as well, that is the interconnection. So uh, this new machine, and also mm, I think that the next one that you'll see in the HPC world will adopt this called the Intel Omnipath Interconnect. Uh, it's something that is not very different from the classical um, fa fa uh, factory uh, kind of uh, interconnect. But since uh, this is something uh, quite new, has some uh, problems uh, that we, you will see in the first stages of production. Um, what I want to see is that this is a, a system in Marconi that will be based on different island. So this kind of interconnection will put together all the three partitions. So everything will try to survive in this kind of uh, world. Um, without going too much into the details, OK, so Intel Broadwell uh, was the first partition of Marconi. And uh, you see that the Broadwell is simply the uh, same architecture of uh, micro architecture of Aswell with a shrink in the, uh, in the processor. So mm, it's uh, very, very similar to the uh, Aswell. Um, the, for, for those who are familiar with the APC, HPC machines in Chineca, this is a uh, quite similar to the Galileo machine. The most uh, important differences is that now you have uh, more cores inside a single node. 
And that can be a problem if you are um, working with uh, uh, application that uh, work with a large bandw uh, bandwidth usage. This is uh, not exactly the same of Quantum Espresso because it's not on the edge of the bandwidth usage, but sometimes it can be a problem. So sometimes uh, uh, some suggestion that uh, is uh, uh, typically going around is don't use all the 36 code cores, but just 32 of them. I think that these suggestions comes just because people like more to work with the powers of two. So when you want to uh, plot uh, the scalability, 36 is not a very good uh, number. But OK, this is a, uh, a caveat that uh, you can hear around. Um, something that is uh, uh, important is uh, that seems that uh, using uh, OpenMP can be uh, can be sometimes uh, not very efficient. Those are problems that uh, we still don't know if they are related to a problem of affinity binding of the course or something that is uh, more related to a compiler problem. So we are still trying to understand with uh, the Intel people what are these kind of problems. But in general, OK, so starting from this slide, it seems OK. The transition from Ashwell to Broadwell is OK. So uh, if, if you were uh, a Chineka user, you may remember that when we switched from the uh, IBM SP6 to the IBM Blue Gene Q, it was a very disrupting change because the, the, the architecture was totally uh, different. Here, the architecture is quite uh, similar. So we thought, OK, this is a, a very, very easy step. Uh, actually, that wasn't true, because life ain't easy. So we started uh, benchmarking the system. This is uh, one of the first uh, tests that we made. And uh, you can see that the green triangles are the measures made with the Marconi. The, 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 square, the blue squares are the measures made with uh, Galileo. What happens is that uh, if uh, we tried uh, several runs, we had a very, very large spread in the results. So something like, like that. So we got some results that were different of a large order of magnitudes. Well, that was because this is a new machine, and uh, each new machine has some time to relax. And uh, we had to, to fix uh, drivers uh, and uh, check if uh, everything was connected uh, uh, in a good way. So when, after this fix, uh, you can see that the, the uh, purple crosses are the results that came from the Marconi system. So after fixing the interconnect drivers, uh, we, we got something that is uh, more reasonable and uh, uh, more important is better than the results that, that we were used to get from uh, Galileo. Um, so increasing uh, the, 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 the yes, this is a, a logarithmic scale, and that means that the problem was not very trivial to. <laughs> Parameters. Here, in this case, yeah. in this case, uh, you, all those differences were coming from the same run. So, same job with same parameters. Am I right, Carol? Do you remember? No, no that's yes. Yeah, yes, the small differences are coming from different parameters. So, what you expect is the Galileo business. So, you have a thread, which is uh, relevant. So let, let, let's see that this, this spread here, the spread in the red uh, and the purple crosses are coming from using different parallelization parameters. Okay, but this spread here is not uh, possible to be reconduct to the parallelization parameters. Something that goes on uh, one order of magnitude, more than one order of magnitude. So it's something that uh, 
is a signal for something that doesn't work in the system. This is a collection of every, every run we run a nice group of benchmarking uh, ways. So we collect the different geometry, the different correlation parameters. So you expect a certain, uh, certain uh, uh, spread. And this is uh, the, the, the blue, which is, uh, which is a lot. Look, look here. This spread is for, for the parallelization for me, though. But this help us to spot out an hardware bug in the network, which is the spread we got with the, with the green triangle that are different trans, different parameters sometimes, but the spread is too large, so the, the parameters were conditioning the performance too much from what is expected to be. So this help us to spot out what was the bug, the hardware bug inside of the network, so we analyze the network and then we fix it with an hardware fix, so not an hardware firmware fix. Okay, so this helps us and this helps to figure out what was the problem. And that was because we were able to run in many different configurations. Because if you, if you, uh, let's say, run always the same things, sometimes they, you tend, or the hardware vendor tend to attribute to your own uh, Face the problem, so they can look at your application, not that they are the first. But if you run the same thing, many different geometry, many different configurations, you probably got very terrible results. They start to, to say, mm, to, to so worry about that. <laughs> then we go deeper into the detail. We run also the, 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 the single kernel linear algebra and the test, which could look more into the detail of what the problem was, so we were able to point out. Okay, then after fixing, okay, something that is uh, more comforting is because here there is the same uh, scaling benchmark made uh, with uh, the Carparinello module on Fermi and on Marconi. Uh, okay, first thing to notice is of course the differences uh, in the performances because uh, see that there is a very good improvement. The other thing is that uh, we can extend the scalability. So there are two messages coming from this benchmark. The performances are improved and also the scalability can be extended. So this is uh, something that uh, uh, has been pushed up to 45,000 of cores. Um, Something that is important uh, is, uh, uh, of course, uh, to discuss also what is the impact of using the, the uh, parallelism levels inside uh, Quantum Espresso. And here I just wanted to show uh, the same kind of test case run with default, default parameters and uh, run choosing what is the best case of all the end pool uh, and band uh, and and task parameters. You see that there, there is a, of course a, a very strong difference for any kind of a number of a processors. Here in this case, the scaling stops here are 144 uh, cores. But okay, mm, here I think that the, the, the scaling just stops because uh, there are some limits in the, the, the number of uh, states or on the number of electrons. So I, I don't think if uh, we can also continue pushing uh, the, 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 the scaling down after 144. <laughs> what is important is, yes, of course, extending, uh, using the, 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 the optimal choice of uh, band groups and pools and tasks and DIAG is something that significantly improves the performances. And this is something that uh, is uh, quite tricky to do without, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a newbie approach. So uh, I think that one of the most important uh, things that we should think of is how to uh, make it easier to find the, the best combination of these parameters. Okay, uh, as I told you, in the last few days, uh, we uh, opened the, the, the new partition that is based on the night's landing. Um, 
Now Intel has two lines of products. One is the uh, standard Intel Xeon uh, processors, to which belong the uh, Broadwell and uh, also the Skylake. And uh, the other line is the uh, Xeon Phi. Uh, if you remember, we discussed last year the Intel, uh, uh, last year or two years ago, the uh, Knight's Corner. Knight's Corner was a coprocessor that was the in the Intel Xeon Phi line. Then uh, Intel decided to drop the Knight's Corner production uh, because uh, using a coprocessor uh, was not uh, very um, uh, convenient in some cases, and they uh, introduced the, 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 the Intel Knight's Landing. Intel Knight's Landing is a processor, so it is something that is uh, self-standing on a single node. But it has uh, some kind of uh, interesting features. The first uh, uh, important feature is that it has a very large number of cores. Uh, in particular, uh, the, the, the model that uh, we have in Chineca has uh, 68 cores. Uh, it has uh, uh, four threads per core. And uh, more important, uh, it has uh, uh, the AVX512 vectors. Um, that means that uh, um, now we have uh, three important uh, uh, things that uh, we need to exploit uh, this kind of architecture. The first is the parallelism based on uh, uh, MPI and OpenMP because uh, we have a very large number of uh, cores that uh, we want to exploit. So performances uh, are very, very tightly bound to the parallelism that we can uh, to exploit. The other thing is that uh, we have uh, vectorial units. That means that uh, our codes should be prone to be parallelized using uh, vectors. And uh, now, since these vectors are so uh, large, so 512 bits, it's a very large uh, vector unit. So that means the large factor of the uh, theoretical peak performance come from this, uh, this feature of this uh, night's landing. Um, the, so uh, this is a very important factor. The third factor is related to the fact that this is a, has a very fast memory uh, on package. So the memory now is uh, um, decoupled on a, a classical DDR memory plus a non-package uh, memory that has a very, very uh, high bandwidth. How to exploit uh, this on-package memory uh, can be simple or complicated depending on the uh, memory model that we want to use. Uh, what uh, we decided to do in Chineca is to uh, use this memory as cache memory. So as a huge uh, level of cache memory that has a very, very high uh, bandwidth. Um, how can we exploit this? Of course, uh, the, the, in this case, it's mandatory to use uh, the data locality as much as possible. So in uh, 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 trying to summarize everything, we have those three key features inside the night's landing. Mm -hmm. The first one is the high number of cores. So we need to exploit parallelism. In uh, uh, Quantum Espresso, the parallelism is mostly based uh, on MPI parallelism. Uh, but in, in particular, we have different uh, layers uh, that are hierarchical uh, communicators for MPI. So pool, band, task groups, and the, 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 the challenge is to try a way to use those levels in the way that uh, fits this uh, kind of architecture in the most efficient way. Of course, also using uh, OpenMP is something that is uh, crucial, but uh, OpenMP at this, uh, uh, this moment in Quantum Espresso is uh, just on very, very small scale uh, uh, approach. So, this is probably not totally effective, uh, just as MPI is. The other um, key feature is the MCDRAM. This is the high bandwidth uh, uh, memory on package of a night's landing. 
the way in which, when uh, the MCD RAM is used on the cache mode, uh, what we can do is to try to improve the data locality. So reusing uh, data structure in a, uh, in a wise way can permit to use the MCD RAM and to increase the performances without touching or uh, modifying the code. There are other um, usage models of the, the MCD RAM that permits to address and to um, allocate data structures directly inside the MCD RAM. The bad side of this is that uh, this usage model requires uh, to change and modify the, 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 the code. So, uh, if you want to use the code without touching uh, anything, so preserving the portability of the code, what you can do is to exploit the data locality and to exploit the MCD RAM using the cache mode. Final thing is the AVX 512, so we have those wide registers. How we can exploit them? Okay, first and most simple thing is to exploit the vectorization uh, uh, that is offered by the compilers. <laughs> You can check the reports and see how much the, the compiler is effective when performing the vectorization of quantum express. So this is something that we should do in the very next uh, days. When uh, coding, what is important is try to make the code that is easily vectorizable by the compiler. You can do that using some uh, golden rules, but in general using clean code techniques and checking uh, if the, 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 co the, the compiler is uh, actually able to vectorize the code. Uh, so the, the, the idea is, okay, in principle, the transition from the actual to the broader should, was, was thinking, was thinking uh, has uh, something that was very smooth. The, the question is, uh, is uh, the transition coming from the uh, Broadwell or the Ashwell to the Knights Landing uh, smooth as well? Well, the answer is in principle, yes, it should be uh, very, very smooth because the, the transition from the Xeon to the Knights Landing uh, just need to recompile if you want to achieve some best performance. In principle, binaries that are compiled uh, on uh, Xeon can be run also on Knights Landing without uh, recompiling. What you want to do is to recompile because uh, on Knights Landing, uh, what is important <coughs> is also to vectorize. So you need to recompile to make able to the compiler to add the vector, um, to, to insert the vectorization for the Knights Landing. But in general, uh, you just recompile if you want to improve the performance. Binaries compiled on Xeon are also uh, compatible with the Knights Landing. This is uh, quite different uh, from the old uh, Knight's Corner in which uh, you had to recompile because uh, binary were not compatible with, uh, with the Xeon line. In general, what we need is to try to use uh, the best uh, MPI and OpenMP, in particular exploiting all the parallelization layers of uh, Quantum Espresso. And what is important is to switch on the AVX instructions with this flag. This permit, in general, to make the compiler able to uh, insert instruction to exploit the AVX instruction set. When in trouble, there is a, uh, this possibility that I want to mention. Now Max uh, offers support. So this is a little bit of advertisement about the, the Max uh, work. And uh, if you subscribe to the user portal, you can access directly to the help desk of Max. That is something that is a layer over the help desk of Chinega and the, the other uh, supercomputing center that are part of the Max Center of Excellence.